This movie is amazing to the beginnings to the end. Great jube. That's real. Hello there. I'm Adam from what that was weird that one. I'm Adam from whatculture.com and welcome to how WWE should have booked. Where I look back at infamous WWE missed booking opportunities, talk about how I were booked differently because I'm a smart ass. This time around, Zack Ryder's US title reign. We've been asked to do this one fucking loads. I'm not sure why it's Zack Ryder, but then again that's the point. He was great and then they did a bad thing to him. They did a really bad thing. So Zack Ryder's journey to the US title was pretty much perfect and it hadn't really been seen before, which makes it even more extraordinary. It actually was the prototype to the Yes movement and Daniel Bryan's success, the Ryder revolution, it was called. So Zack Ryder was sort of unsatisfied with his position on the card. He didn't really have a position on the card. He'd been in La Familia and had done a thing with Kurt Hawkins and it was just sort of sh So he started making a show on YouTube, Z, the true Long Island story. And yeah, it just got over his personality with the fans. He was an affable goof. He was a bit of a dork. He made his own internet title. He was really endearing. And he engaged with the fans in a way that genuinely wasn't being tried by WWE. This was before they went absolutely mental with social media. It just, oh, the, the bad times. The very bad times. Tout. He would uh, give fans 8 by 10s who tweeted him. He had these shirts with QR codes on them, which did a thing. Um, they sold out even when he wasn't actually on the card. Uh, he got chance whenever he wasn't on the card. We want Ryder. So this continued throughout 2011. And weirdly, WWE booked him most effectively when they didn't book him because his support grew organically and the fans felt its ownership of this Zack Ryder character, which is rare. So they finally wised up towards the tail end of 2011. He was made uh, assistant to Teddy Long. Uh, he tried for the US title of vengeance against Dolph Ziggler and failed thanks to Jack Swagger. He wasn't booked on Survivor Series itself but made a run-in after the US title match to a huge pop. Then he was given the support of Cena and he was booked for the title one more time at TLC. Uh, the match went on first and he won. He celebrated with his dad and he was a very happy man. And so basically 2011 was the year of Zack Ryder and then the f wheels fell off. In December, Kane returned with his mask back on. He was all healed. He started targeting Cena to embrace the hate. Oh, this storyline. Uh, he attacked Zack Ryder, choked him through the stage because of those injuries. Zack Ryder then lost the title to Jack Swagger in January after less than a month. He wasn't on the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. Uh, he got embarrassed all the way to Elimination Chamber. You know, he wore this comically stupid neck brace. He, he was in a wheelchair with his hair still sticking up. Woo, woo, woo. You roll it. Oh, can I? Can I? Well, he was pretending to be crippled, so I feel like I can. But I had to ask. Uh, while he was wheelchair bound, his girlfriend Eve kissed John Cena. Uh, he, yeah, he wore this neck brace. He fell on his ass in front of everyone. He got wheeled off the stage. Uh, he was humiliated on a weekly basis. He was the only person in the company that didn't know Eve had turned heel before WrestleMania. So he was just like, when she likes me and she's got the boobies. <laughs> At WrestleMania in Team Teddy versus Team Johnny, he took the pin for Team Teddy. Uh, then he got kicked in the balls by Eve after the match in front, of, in front of just everybody. He then didn't really appear that much. Then he got his chance to get even with Kane on the Over the Limit pre-show and he failed in seven minutes. And then he just sort of went away. And he's sort of been a roller coaster for Zach ever since. So occasionally he gets a little bit of push and then he goes back down, a little bit of push and then he gets back down, a little bit of push. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a bad way to live and I can do it better. Now, normally when I do these, it's I, I come up with a big story because I'm a big boy. Uh, but this time around, 
I don't want to do that. I actually just want to make the US title run itself a solid one comprised of little feuds. Not one gigantic story, but just enough small feuds, regular feuds, to establish Zack Ryder as a solid mid-card talent. He's got a bit of a ceiling. He's a goofball character. He's not going to be WWE champion, but he belongs on the upper mid-card, and it's my job to sort of cement him there. And I want to do that with a nice, lengthy US title run. And, and the thing is, it's not fixing the Embrace the Hate storyline. That's not what this is about, because the Embrace the Hate storyline is dog shit, and you can't fix dog shit. Just, just remove Zack from it. Let the US champion have his own US championship stories. Don't have the lower tier champions be the props in someone else's story. I mean, you can have the shit. Oh, please, please, John Cena, won't you turn evil just for me, for Kane? You can have that storyline, but you don't get to play with Zack Ryder because he's a fucking champion. So go fuck yourself. Basically, my job here is to take the amazing crowd support that Zack Ryder had. You know when he came out and he would do woo 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 and the entire arena would go deafening with it? That's amazing. It's basically my job just not to f*** that up. So, we start at TLC. Uh, I would keep the entire thing leading up to TLC. It was a really good story. Not quite getting there at Vengeance, making your intention known at Survivor Series, and then TLC win Big Pop. Amazing. So after Ryder overthrows Dolph Ziggler, one of her boys, Vicky Guerrero, declares war on Zack Ryder. She promises to crush the Ryder revolution. Excuse me! Excuse oh. me! So Vicky Guerrero has a word with Mr. Personality, John Laurinaitis, and the Royal Rumble US title match is set. It's going to be Zack Ryder defending his championship against both Dolph Ziggler and Jack Swagger. Ryder against both of Vicky's boys, and in the lead up, they use their double team advantage to completely ruin Zack's life. Whilst also slightly hinting at the fact that they both really want the US title. Because in these stories, people should really want the US title. And I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, what about Dolph Ziggler versus Punk? That match was great. Keyboard, keyboard, keyboard. And I understand that match was really good. Here's what I'd replace it with. I'd replace it with CM Punk versus The Miz versus R-Truth, right? Because, well, a couple of reasons. First of all, the awesome truth thing, as much as it seems baffling that R-Truth could be capable of anything halfway decent because he's a stain, a stain upon the carpet that is life, he actually was pretty good in 2011. Him and The Miz formed this psychotic team called The Awesome Truth, and they were weirdly pushed. Like, they closed off hell in a cell and, like, ruined the show. They went over Triple H and CM Punk at Vengeance. Sure, they lost to The Rock and John Cena at Survivor Series, but they were in the main event of Survivor Series at Madison Square Garden with The Rock and John Cena. So it's not like they don't belong in the upper echelon and like they are falling out, Miz turned on our truth So you've got a story where Punk is trying to defend the title not only from these guys, but they're also in fighting amongst themselves. Also, the fact that both men are in triple threat matches for their championships, Ryder and Punk, that just creates a little subconscious link between the two in terms of quality of superstar. Yet yeah, they're not on the same level, but the fact that we're seeing them in the sort of the same match, that's beneficial for Ryder. So at the Royal Rumble, it's Ryder versus Ziggler and Swagger, and Ryder retains, hitting both Ziggler and Swagger with a double Rough Rider. Because I think that would look cool. So that's uh, Dolph Ziggler's rematch taken care of and Jack Swagger, maybe they're in fighting. It's time for Zack Ryder to move on and he moves on to Wade Barrett. Now this is the feud that's going to take us to WrestleMania. See, Wade Barrett is starting to go on the whole, I'm British, God save our gracious, that kind of kick. And he basically wants to exert British rule back over the US. He says, Britain let you declare independence and Britain can take you back whenever we damn well please. So he wants to take the US belt for the empire and Zack says, no way, USA, woo woo woo, you bro it. So at Elimination Chamber, we've got the British Revolution versus the Ryder Revolution. And during that match, Wade Barrett constantly has the upper hand in terms of power. They really play up the fact that Wade Barrett is a tall man, a tall sumbitch. 
and he overpowers Ryder constantly, but Ryder out-wrestles him, catches him with a victory roll, and retains his championship. Barrett beats him up after the match to get his heat back, whilst waving the flag of the United Kingdom. God save our grip. So at WrestleMania, Wade Barrett will fight Zack Ryder once again. Now I know, I know, that the roar after Elimination Chamber, Wade Barrett got injured. Here's the thing with injuries, right? Uh, they happen when someone is in the wrong place at the wrong time. And if you book them in a different story, they will not be in that place at that time, so the injury probably won't happen. You never know when injuries are gonna happen. So basically with booking, if it's like an accidental injury, I just tend to just say, well, it wouldn't have happened because Big Show wouldn't have thrown the dude into Wade Barrett and his shoulder wouldn't have gone Bleh. And if you don't like that, I guess suck my dick. I guess suck my dick. So Wade Barrett, furious at his loss at Elimination Chamber, demands a rematch. And Zack Ryder said, you lost, bro. You bro, bro. Woo, bro, bro, woo. You know it. So Wade Barrett takes matter into his own hands and attacks Zack Ryder's dear old dad. You know, that guy who very obviously likes being on camera. He's the original bro. Bro classic. So Barrett grabs him at ringside and he batters him. And he says, do I get my rematch now? And Zack's like, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna kill you, actually. So WrestleMania, Wade Barrett versus Zack Ryder, no DQ. Everyone wants the belt. There's an actual passion here. It feels like maybe something worthy of WrestleMania. Maybe. And at WrestleMania, Zack Ryder beats Wade Barrett decisively and cleanly. God bless our gracious America. Flag. Right, so uh, we're heading to Extreme Rules and we need a new feud for Zack Ryder and that's gonna be The Miz. Now you can build a really great story with Miz, first of all because Zack Ryder, he's a very earnest babyface and he needs a proper detestable heel. Someone who you, ju you just don't like, no matter, like you realize he's good at his job, but you still hate him. That's The Miz. Also, they've had a similar journey in a way. Like, The Miz went through the real world and Zack went through his own YouTube channel, so they both come through this sort of unorthodox, grassroots way of trying to build support for their personas and finally making the big time. Zack Ryder's just defended the US Championship successfully at WrestleMania, and The Miz, last year, he defended the WWE Championship successfully. Something he can say that Zack Ryder will never do. But the people, they've rejected The Miz, and that eats him up when he sees a f***ing idiot like Zack Ryder get all of the fan support and all of the opportunities that come with that. Who are you? You're just a guy that says, woo, that's nowhere near as impressive as me. I say the word awesome. So Miz wins a number one contendership match and they fight at Extreme Rules and I would give these guys the Fools Count Anywhere stipulation. I would not give it to Kane and Randy Orton because, well, their match ended in the ring anyway, so you might as well just give them No Holds Barred or Extreme Rules something. So Miz is at Ryder fight around the stage in the arena and then finally Ryder gives Miz a rough rider off the stage through a stack of tables because I think that would look cool. Ryder retains and we go into Over the Limit still with The Miz. At this point we work into the fact that The Miz is going off to shoot a movie. We work that into the story. Now I know we're a couple of years off from his arrogant movie star gimmick aka the best thing he ever did but the thing is it's real. He is taking two months off to film God Help Us The Marine 3, a movie which does not have a tomato meter rating on Rotten Tomatoes, but it does have a couple of audience reviews. I'll just read one for you. This movie is amazing to the beginnings to the end. Great jube. That's real. So The Miz is like, I'm going off to actually shoot movies and you are a neckbeard nerd on the internet filming himself in his bedroom, okay? We don't compare. I want the US title because it does not deserve to be around your neck. I'm gonna take it to the movie set where I'm gonna get it some actual proper exposure, okay? Because I'm a megastar, not a dweeb. So uh, over the limit, Ryder and The Miz fight one more time, maybe in a cage match? Because I wanna see a Rough Rider from atop of a cage? Maybe I'm going overboard with the Rough Riders. Maybe I don't give a sh Either way, Ryder beats Miz decisively and sends him packing from the WWE for a couple of months. Then, for no way out, Ryder enters into a new feud, this time with Antonio Cesaro, who has debuted only like a month or two before and uses that debut momentum to win the US Championship. Now I know, I know, you're burying him! 
I'm not. Thing is, Zack Ryder's had a reign that's lasted for a couple of months, but also the US title is the lowest title. It was at the time anyway. And it's time to just build him up just a little bit. The upper mid card, that's where we want to keep Zack Ryder because he's got that kind of merchandise shifting appeal. So Ryder loses that title at Over the Limit, but the very next night on Raw, he qualifies for the World Heavyweight Championship Money in the Bank ladder match. So he's got that momentum back on his side. Suddenly people aren't that worried about him. Uh, now the last Raw before Money in the Bank, he gets his one-on-one -on -one rematch with Antonio Cesaro for the US Championship. He loses that thanks to The Miz, who returns one week earlier than he does in real life. He returned at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. He returns to Kostak Ryder and insert himself into the World Heavyweight Championship ladder match. At Money in the Bank, the Miz Zack Ryder feud that intensifies a little bit more with Zack Ryder furious with the Miz, giving him the Rough Rider from the top of a ladder. I'm I think the Rough Rider is a cool move and it can happen from a lot of places. That's just my deal. Get over it. Unfortunately, that move takes them both pretty much out of the match, so neither man win. But then on Raw 1000, after Money in the Bank, like in real life, Miz wins the Intercontinental Championship from Christian, and then the Miz versus Zack Ryder at SummerSlam for the Intercontinental Championship. This this is probably where you would have a cage match. Because the rivalry has basically lasted from since WrestleMania to SummerSlam off and on. And it's not just about the US title either, it's about Zack Ryder making the audience invested in him. So, we gave him a lengthy title reign, couple of nice mini feuds just to establish that Zack Ryder is a guy worthy of gold, and now we've moved him up a little bit into intercontinental title reign territory, where he's fighting The Miz in a personal feud at SummerSlam, and from that point onwards, as long as you don't mess it up, you should have a fairly stable and reliable mid-carder in Zack Ryder. So that's how I would have booked Zack Ryder's US title reign. Woo, woo, woo. Did I blow it? Oh, I ended the video badly. So do you disagree? If so, tell me about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com and I'll see you soon. Wow.